Hello YouTube, welcome back. Slightly different video this time. Might end up being a couple of videos because I want to try and keep the length down. Not quite sure how this is going to pan out really at the moment. Um, this video is about uh, Freemo or modular railroad in loosely based on Freemo. Basically there's a group of us, I say locally, um, across the Midlands really. I mean, for perspective, I live in, in North Nottinghamshire. Um, most of our meets are over in Staffordshire, which is about an hour's drive away. And uh, our small group, which is about half a dozen to 10 people off and on, spread out across the sort of West, and, uh, West Midlands mostly, actually, with a couple of us coming from the East Midlands. Anyway, that's that background. Um, our group is one of uh, a few dotted through the UK that do um, modular railroad into a set of Fremo standards, which tend to vary a little bit from one group to another. And there are three or four big meets through the year um, where as many people as, as we can get together really do so and organise a big sort of free moment over a weekend. Our local one is at Armitage in Staffordshire and that's usually towards the end of September we've got one planned for this year. But there's quite an active group on the south coast of England that meet a bit more regularly than that and uh, a lot of those guys come along to the big one in September. So in the meantime our local group and the sort of Midlands group, the Midland Belt, um, we try and get together as often as we can, but usually you're looking at about three or four months um, between meets. And like any sort of group or club, there's been ups and downs with membership and uh, sort of uh, decisions on which direction we're going and that kind of thing. Our last meet was in January. We're in beginning of April now. Um, that went quite well. Um, I was uh, I volunteered. Um, I think it was a case of everybody else stepped back to do the planning for the last meet and sort of by default I ended up doing the planning for this one as well. So our next meet is next Saturday which is it's uh, Sunday today so I've just got a week to sort of uh, get the last few bits and bobs ready um, and I've been doing the planning for this one. So I thought it might be useful to perhaps document that on a video, um, show a little bit of the process that I've gone through to do some of the planning for this meeting um, and then on Saturday Rather than just filming sort of random stuff, what I'll try and do is, is follow um, the operations a little bit. So follow a train, you know, from start to finish that um, we work on switch lists. So that's the idea. Um, I'll do a little bit of um, a guide, if you like, or just go over the kind of things that I've done on the, on the Mac um, to plan this meet and uh, how I've used sort of various tools on the internet and so on. Um, and then depending on how well or badly it goes next Saturday, the that either the second part of this video or the second video will be footage from that and hopefully a bit of explanation of what's happening as well. So I've no idea what it's going to turn out like, but we'll give it a go um, and uh, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so one would argue that one of the um, benefits of Freemo, uh, a modular standard, is that as a, an owner of a module, you can build pretty much what you like. Um, as long as you have all the uh, the ends of your modules all connect up with other people's modules and the, you know everything's consistent, you apply those standards, you can do pretty much what you like, which is great. Um, the downside from an organizer's point of view or a planning point of view, if you're trying to sort of organize any operations or that feel vaguely meaningful, um, is that you can end up with something completely random that changes every time. So essentially, every time you have a meet, you're having to plan the operations for a brand new layout. Um, and a layout that you don't necessarily have all the data for either. Um, so unless people are very forthcoming with all the information about their modules and the, the, the traffic on it and so on and what stock they have, it is quite a logistical um, mare. It's a big enough job to have to do once, but to have to do that for every single meet really becomes quite an onerous task. So um, in our group, what we've tried to do, or we've always wanted to do, and we haven't managed to do it yet actually for one reason or another, is to try to aim to have a fairly consistent layout of modules um, with a little bit of variety, but essentially is the same core sort of layout, if you like, every time. So that once we've got the operation sorted out, we can repeat that operation um, every time we meet. Um, just working with switch list or JMRI or, or whatever system we use, that we've done the essential planning, we've organized the trains, um, and we can just run an operating session as you would do on a large layout, for example. So with that in mind, um, this is the plan that we used back in January. Um, slightly different, just physically we had to move things around a little bit uh, on this top corner. But um, 
this is a sort of vaguely scale floor plan, if you like, of the hall that we used. Um, and I drew up um, boxes for each of the modules to sort of uh, equate to the scale. Well, it's fairly self-evident. Um, so I could plan where they could physically fit within the hall. And I had to bear in mind things like uh, which of these modules had got uh, runaround loops and that kind of business. So we need to be able to turn a train at one end of the, the route. So what we're trying to achieve um, is a bit tricky, actually, to um, to get the balance right. The, the, the look and feel, I guess, of, of the operations, or the, the layout, rather, is kind of a fairly quiet branch line, or, um, or perhaps a small short line, where you wouldn't really be expecting a great deal of traffic. There might be sort of one train a day, a local, sort of um, switching up and down the line, which is, again, fine, um, and the kind of thing, the kind of railroading that appeals to me. Um, on the other hand, though, you've got a group of people who've got together to play trains for the day. And essentially what you're trying to do is generate enough traffic um, to keep people busy and to keep trains moving through the day. So people have got something to do. And as I say, that's quite a tricky balance to get right um, so that people don't feel it's gone too far sort of one way or the other. Um, so anyway, as I say, this is the plan that we used in January, roughly. And this is the, the modules that had turned up. So I use this as a basis and um, thinking, well, I've got a switch list organized um, and we had a little bit of um, what went well and what didn't on the day as well. We've got some ideas. So, for example, we had a train that ran out of Trent Yard um, through Springfield down to Cardwell Junction and switched Cardwell and Phoenix Park. And on the day, that was really quite a busy train compared to one or two of the others. Um, Cardwell Junction really is central to all of this because that's where a lot of trains can come in and turn around and move out to other areas. But I'll, I'll cover that in a bit more detail. So as I say, this was the essential uh, plan to start from. There were going to be a couple of changes. So the first thing I had to do was establish who was going to come in April, because if somebody can't come along, that means that their modules may well not be able to make it too. Um, and in this case, we know that uh, one of our guys uh, wasn't able to come along, um, unfortunately, and that meant that Armstrong was out of the deal. So there's one example. Um, what I came up with was, so this, um, Basically, you can see that at its core, it's got the same sort of um, few modules there. Um, what I did do was a couple of the modules are a little bit more um, kind of rural, I guess. Um, Blind River and Wallingford and Sheldon, I felt that all of those actually sort of sat quite well together as, as a branch on their own. Um, and we've added in um, another module, which has sort of joined our group. Um, and again, a little bit more on that in a bit. So step one, working out what modules are going to be at the meet and how they're physically going to fit into the hall. Not quite as simple as that because I'm having to think about uh, traffic as well at the same time and what kind of trains we're going to run. And as you can see here, I've listed some. Um, and that was based on work that I did within switch list. So we'll have a look at that next. Before we go into switch list, one of the things I needed to do was to, to get an up-to-date list of uh, what stock we'd got within the group. Um, again, that's quite a big exercise in itself, just working out exactly what we've got to be able to run. So I used Google Sheets to uh, set up a stock list, and we have a, a fairly active little Facebook group to manage all our um, to plan all our, our meets and so on. So I used that to ask people to sort of come on here and update their list. And I wanted to make sure I've got that fairly up to date before I started messing about in switch list. Um, because moving cars sort of in and out, it, as a one-off exercise, it's okay. But when you're constantly tweaking the, the, the list of freight cars, it, again, it's another big piece of work that I wanted to try and cut down on the amount of resource on. So you can see here it says final. That's because there's been a few versions of this as I've gone along and tweaked things. Um, but essentially the steps I had to do within switch list is First of all, establishing the layout itself, and we, we sort of set a fairly arbitrary date, um, 1999. Um, most of the stock we run is fairly modern, within quotes, uh, and that fits the bill fairly nicely. Um, step one is the towns, and each of these towns is essentially one of the, the modules that's being brought along. Um, on each of those towns, we have a number of industries, and in this case, um, these sort of equate to uh, sidings or spurs on each of the, the layouts as well. 
And so for each of these, you're, you're obviously naming them, um, telling the program whereabouts it is, the spur length, and also whether it has doors and the number of doors, because it can actually, when it creates the switch list, send uh, cargoes to those. We've also got the one main yard, which is Trent Yard. Freight cars is this long list that I've had to, um, I say long, 251 cars there that I've input. Not all of these are necessarily active. Now, what I've done is for the division, um, each of the divisions actually equates to one of the members of the group. And for example, I know that RL isn't going to be there in April. So although I've got all these cars added into here in order to sort of future proof the list and use it again next time when he is available, what I do know is that none of those cars are going to be available for this meet. So before I do any planning at all, I can assign any of the cars that are on the division RL to workbench. And that essentially takes them off the layout effectively. Um, where the real sort of um, work comes, I guess, is here in cargoes, where what you're doing is setting up the traffic itself. Um, working out what cargoes are going to go from what industry to what other industry or perhaps from the yard to the industry or vice versa. Um, switch list uses a nice little helper um, that can suggest various things and I certainly use that as a, a tool. One of the best tools though is a report which is the um, cargo report which as you're going along sort of inputting these things you can get a really nice, let's open this up a little bit, um, view of how active or not those particular industries are and also an overview of the numbers of cars that are being held at any one time uh, and being used over a sort of typical week if you like of traffic. So that's a really useful thing to keep a gauge. Um, at one point I had some quite long trains going around the layout and um, I was a bit concerned I was overloading the yard for example so I was able to sort of use that to trim back each of these until I start got traffic that was hopefully within capacity. And then the final step, once you've kind of, well, I say final step, this is one of the final steps that you have to keep going back to, is setting up the trains themselves. And you do this obviously in conjunction with the, with the plan. And so here, for example, I've got uh, three main trains and then one little extra transfer that runs as well. Um, so the Blind River Valley Turn, um, basically runs from Trent through Sheldon, Blind River, Wallingford and then back to Trent Yard. So if I show you that on the plan, that will come out of Trent, pass through Springfield and turn around at Cardwell and then run out through Sheldon, doing some switching there, switching again at Blind River and Wallingford before returning back to Trent Yard. And each day, each one of these trains will run. So once you've set all that up, um, you, you lay out essentially and the, the stock that's on there, the car goes and you've got your train set up. The thing to do then is to start uh, simulating an operating session and see how it runs. So by clicking an overview, it'll automatically populate the trains for, for day one. And by checking through the switch list, I can see whether that's given me the, the, the kind of uh, the level of activity, I guess, that the operators are likely to, to want on a typical train. Um, in order to simulate it, what I'm essentially going to do is work through each of these and click on train completed until they all say zero, start a new session for the next day and automatically everything gets moved on with the assumption that those cars are now in the new location. I check through the switch lists again and so on. Um, once I was happy that um, that was working okay and I'd been back and tweaked cargoes and things until the switch list that were being generated was sort of giving us the traffic we wanted, um, I had to keep saving iterations of the program, which is why we've got 2.3 final. I ended up with um, a, a good starting position. So from that, I create a run off some reports. And um, this is quite an essential part, actually, because I'm not intending on taking any kind of uh, PC or Mac or anything with me to the, the layout. This is all going to be run through in simulation beforehand and all the switch list being printed off. And I'll show you those in a bit, um, which does make it quite important on the day that actually we get things right. Um, but what it means is I need to be able to run through each of these days, mark each of them as being completed, printing off the switch lists as I go along. Um, and I know that that will work 
so I take the switch list with me and they'll work. I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully it makes sense. So one of the tools I've used then is, is day one, it's important that we know where all the stock actually sits because otherwise the whole thing isn't just going to work. It just isn't going to work. I use one of the reports in Switchlist and then basically put that into um, a spreadsheet again on Google Sheets, which I've shared. And we've got a spreadsheet which lists each of the locations and all the cars that are sitting at those locations along with the initials for the owners so people can have a look at that and just see where they need to unpack their boxes and stack them on the on the layout um what i've also done as a by the by is just copied that across to a car list so everybody knows what to actually bring on the day because it isn't necessarily everything they own and from a sort of dispatching point of view i guess we've, we've got a crew sheet here now which people have started to populate and I'll, I'll print that off and take it with me on the day as well so what I've done there is essentially that I'll run through each day, printed off the switch list for each day, mark them as being completed, started a new session, done the same again. And we found last time that we ran through about four days, um, sort of four virtual days, if you like, over the course of our uh, day long meet. Um, so I've done five days just to be on the safe side in case any of those go fairly quickly. And it doesn't matter if we don't get to day five. Um, and what I actually did was save them all off into a PDF again until I was happy that there weren't any glitches like people not having cars that they said they'd got or uh, whatever it might be um, and I've just run through all the PDFs and printed those off in a bundle. So as I described I've got a bit of a, a bundle of paperwork to take with me then for Saturday. So I've got the things that I mentioned there like the, the crew sheets for people to note down which trains they want to take. Um, really important one is this uh, report which gives us the start positions for all the cars on the layout. And then just as a sort of tick list really for people as well is just um, the list of the, the, the cars that they need to take with them. And then for each day, the switch lists have been printed off. Um, and what I've done really is, is because people aren't necessarily gonna spot the dates on those is um, numbered the days for each of the trains. So for example, this is the switch list for 401 which is the Blind River Valley turn for day one. Um, and then we have one for 402, the Cardwell job for day one and so on. So I've got a nice big uh, bundle of paperwork <laughs> to take with me along with the floor plans and so on as well. And one final thing to say on that, I guess, is that um, the program switch list allows you to um, use different styles of switch lists. And um, I thought it might be interesting for people to get a feel for how they look and feel. So we've we've printed off, or rather I've printed off um, each of the days using a slightly different style of switch list. That will give everybody a chance to operate using those and see which ones they prefer basically. And then going forward, we can kind of stick to that as a standard. So that's all the planning. Um, sorry for rambled on a bit. I just figured actually if it's interesting to somebody you know, great, I don't expect you to get thousands of hits or anything like that. It's not the most uh, enthralling topic. But um, as I say, I thought it might be interesting to document sort of what I've done with it so far. And then I think I've probably gone to another video for this. The, the next video, hopefully, will be um, following some of those operations um, at the meet on Saturday itself, providing everything doesn't just go horribly wrong and doesn't work. So thank you for bearing with me if, you've, if you have done so far. Um, and I'll see you in the next bit. Cheers.